welcome to another Antique Sunday. Today I'd like to talk about the birds on the designs in our collection. And firstly, I'll take you to the two detail birds from the altar frontal of around 1650, which was used during Catholic services at a time of religious conflict in the mid 17th century in the UK. The wool used on the original piece was a very fine Persian wool and we've used the Renaissance very fine two-ply uh, naturally dyed, cochineal dyed um, wool on this piece. So it's a very different feel than using the Appleton's wools and um, it's kind of Marmite really. I absolutely love using it but I know our test stitcher Harriet wasn't so keen on this and prefers Appleton's and I think that's because she loves long and short soft shading and this piece doesn't have long and soft short soft shading sorry um it actually has long and short buttonhole stitches on it so why did the designer of the altar frontal put these spot motifs of little scenes of a parrot and a bird possibly a nut hatch possibly a wren into this design well we think it's because they had these designs. So although it might have meant something to them or to the original embroiderer or designer, um, it could be that they just had a very nice picture. And of course, parrots or um, any sort of cockatoo was a very exotic bird. So that was a popular design. And the little natural, uh, natural bird, a uh, local British bird, as in the nuthatch or wren, um, that would also very, be very appealing and maybe it meant news coming. At the top of the Jacobean hunt sign, there's a bird that's tumbling and I really struggled with designing this piece because the bird seemed to have a head that was upside down. And of course, it's a Chinese bird and um, it's a you know probably on from a rank badge and this one is dated a little bit later in the 17th century and when we were starting to trade with China and become aware of these beautiful designs. Towards the end of the 17th century, when William and Mary took the throne, opening new trade routes meant that we could actually access different designs, different wools, different methods and stitches and different techniques so that the actual range of crew work just exploded in style and substance. The new wealthy and the new middle classes in particular really snapped up these new embroideries. They'd always sort of rather envied the court with their fantastic Elizabethan costumes and amazing display of wealth that the courtiers would wear. And of course, the information about that would trickle down. And as costume was sold and resold and repurposed, the actual um, admiration of it just grew. So moving across to the arts and crafts at the end of the Victorian era in Britain, um, you can see that the art designers actually harked back to the past, to the birds of the past, to the tree of life shapes. If you look at the Aesop's Fable frame design that um, we're going to bring out quite soon, you can see that the um, hummocks from the past have changed to a landscape and the um, idyllic scenes in the needlepoint and in the uh, crew work in the 17th and 18th centuries is really quite well developed into a more naturalistic style. The colours too have changed. The colours on the arts and crafts pieces are generally more realistic to the actual colour on the natural animals. But again, these pieces will also tell a story and this frame is all about Aesop's fables. <laughs> 